Hello everyone, welcome back to Daikin Card. So today we'll be taking a look at a fun problem from the IMO shortlist 2023. So the IMO shortlist is a list of about 32 questions from which the jury will choose the final set of 6 questions to be used for that year's contest. So the IMO 2023 was actually held in Japan and there was a pretty interesting problem involving Pokemons that was actually uh, made it all the way to the shortlist. But unfortunately, it wasn't chosen in the end for the IMO of that year. Now, this is uh, problem A1, which is the easiest problem among all the algebra problems. But nonetheless, it's pretty fun. So let's take a look at the problem statement. So the problem statement is as follows. Professor Oak is feeding his 100 Pokemon. Each Pokemon has a bow whose capacity is a positive real number of kilograms. So something like this. These capacities are known to Professor Oak. The total capacity of all the bowls is 100 kilograms. Now, Professor Oak needs to distribute 100 kilograms of food in such a way that each Pokemon receives a non-negative integer number of kilograms of food. Now, this amount of food that is distributed for the Pokemon may be larger than the capacity of their bowl. So for example, in this case, maybe you want to give this Pokemon 7 kg of food, this Pokemon maybe 4 kg, maybe this Pokemon can be 5 kg. But the amount that you give must be integer. So that's the difference between the amount of food and the capacity. The capacity is any real number. Okay, the satisfaction or rather the dissatisfaction level of a Pokemon who receives n kilograms of food and whose bow has a capacity of c kilograms is equal to the absolute difference between N and C. So for example, if I give this Pokemon 4 kilograms of food, does this satisfaction here for this Pokemon is 0 0.1. Now we need to find the smallest real number D such that regardless of the capacities of the bowls, Professor Oak can distribute the food in a way that the sum of these satisfaction levels over all the 100 Pokemon is at most D. Basically, you want to find the tightest bound D such that Professor Oak can guarantee the sum of this satisfaction to be less than or equal to D. So, it is actually quite a fun story to this problem and I would say it's not too difficult to think of a way to approach this problem. So let us first think about what is the worst case scenario that could happen. Well. The worst case scenario is when all capacities are sort of integers plus a half. So for example, you might have a scenario like this, where the capacities are 1.5, 0.5, 1.5, 0.5, and so on. Remember, the sum of the capacity must also be 100 kilograms. So in this case, indeed, the you can check that the capacity will all sum up to 100 kilograms. And no matter how you distribute the food, because the food must be integers, each Pokemon will have a dissatisfaction of at least 0 0.5. So you know that in this scenario, the total dissatisfaction will not be less than 50. So if you already have a scenario where your dissatisfaction sum will be at least 50. So maybe you guess, okay, this is the worst case and you guess that the smallest real number D that meets the condition is 50. Okay, so let's say this is the guess that you come up with. Now we have to actually prove the problem. So for the solution, I mean, firstly, you already have a scenario where D needs to be at least 50. So now all that we need to show is given arbitrary capacity for the bowls, can I guarantee the dissatisfaction sum to be less than or equal to 50? Now, let's think of how we might want to distribute the food when we are given the capacities. So if you have a capacity like 7.3, it's quite natural that, okay, to keep my dissatisfaction as low as possible, I will maybe give 7 kg. Whereas for something like 3.9, I will round up instead to 4 kilograms. So maybe I will go with the nearest integer to that real number. So I just round the number basically. The problem here is that the sum of food given out needs to also sum to 100 kilograms. Remember, he, he needs to distribute 100 kilograms of food. So... If I just round the capacities and use that to determine the amount of food I give up, there's no guarantee that the sum of food given out will be 100 kilograms. So that is sort of the tricky part. But it sounds like the close to the you know the best way you can give out the food. 
So how do we adjust this slightly so that we actually give out food that sums to 100 kilograms? So this suggests that actually we need to think about each capacity as the sum of its integer part and its fractional part. So for example, if the capacity is 7.3, the integer part is 7 and the fractional part is 0 0.3. And then for uh, 3.9, the integer part is 3 and the fractional part is 0 0.9. And intuitively, we know that, okay, we will want to give uh, 7, so either 7 or 8 for this Pokemon, 3 or 4 for this Pokemon, but we're not sure how to do it so that, you no know, we can make the amount of food given out sum to 100 kilograms. So what we do is we first give the integer part out to the Pokemon first. So give AI amount of food to Pokemon I first. So we give all the green amounts. Now we still have to distribute the remaining uh, amount of food, which is actually the sum of FI. Yeah, because remember the capacities themselves, they also sum to 100 kilograms. So the sum of everything is 100 kilograms. If I give out amount of food that matches the green bars, then the amount of food I still have to give out will be the sum of all the yellow bars. Okay, so the amount of food I still have to distribute is sum of the FIs. I call that S. So the question is, I have this S amount of food that is still remaining. Which Pokemon should get 1 kg more of food and which Pokemon should get 0 kg more of food? Intuitively, the one that is closer to the next integer should get 1 kilogram of food, right? Whereas those that are as near to the rounded down integer should not get more food. So this suggests that actually, the key idea is you should renumber the Pokemons such that the fractional parts are in uh, non-increasing order. So F1 greater than or equal to F2 dot 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 greater than F100. And then you start giving out 1 kg of food starting from Pokemon 1 onwards, which is the Pokemon with the largest fractional part. So you give, uh, you have S kilogram of remaining food, you give Pokemon 1 1 kilogram, Pokemon 2 1 kilogram, and so on until you hit the first S Pokemon. So this is how you use your S kilogram of remaining food. And I claim that if I do this approach, which intuitively sounds like a good plan, you can keep the total dissatisfaction less than or equal to 50. So this comes the other part of the proof. So from here, you just need to compute the total dissatisfaction and show that it's less than or equal to 50. So the total dissatisfaction in this case is 1 minus F1, because that is now the gap between N and C. Whereas for those Pokemon that don't get any additional uh, food, the dissatisfaction will be the fractional part minus zero. So this is the total dissatisfaction. And I just tie this up. I add up the S copies of one. And then uh, I have the minus F1 to Fs here. And then Fs plus F100. And now we recall that S is actually the sum of F1 to F100. So if we plug in the sum F1 to F100 here and cancel out this part, we actually have Fs plus 1 to F100 here, plus another copy of Fs plus 1 to F100. So this is equal to two copies of Fs plus 1 plus all the way to F100. So I need to show that this is less than or equal to 50. So we are very close. Obviously, we need to do something with the fact that the fractional parts here are decreasing. So, and we are left with the small fractional parts in the, uh, in the equation, right? So can we bound that to be less than 50? Now, to do this, there are a few ways. The way that I like the most is I can consider the average of these terms. So the average of these terms is going to be less than or equal to the average of everything because my fractional parts are, are non-increasing as I go from left to right. So, and I know how to find the average of F1 to F100 because the sum here is S. So the average is S over 100. So to bring everything together, this is my total dissatisfaction. This thing in the bracket is equal to the, the quantity, the count, times the average. So here there's 100 minus S terms. So I take 100 minus S times the average of these terms is exactly the same as the sum. And I know how to bound the average. The average is less than or equal to S100. So I put S over 100 here. 
And so over here, I have a quadratic function, which you know, the maximum for this downward facing quadratic function happens when s equals 50. So I can put less than or equal to and plug in 50, and this indeed gives me 50. So that is all for this really interesting problem. I think the problem is indeed uh, not too difficult. And being a A1, it is uh, indeed something that is manageable. The solution is quite intuitive to derive. The strategy to give out the food is also quite intuitive. So I hope you found this problem fun nonetheless. Do stay tuned for more math videos. And I'll see you in the next video.